What is going on people and welcome back to a brand new video on how British speed cameras work. Whether you're just coming on holiday to Brain or you live here, this video is going to be useful. Just a quick disclaimer, this video is not how to avoid getting caught by speeding. However, with the knowledge that I'm going to give you, you could probably use it to not get caught speeding. But that's not what the aim of this video is for. The aim of the video is to teach you how they work. Knowledge is key. And if you're worried about getting caught speeding while you're driving, that means that you're not thinking about driving. And the aim of this video is just to make you a little bit more relaxed while you're driving. So the format of the video is we're going to go through the different types of cameras, how they work, how you'll get caught speeding through these types of cameras, and then we're going to cover some myths. Before we get started, if you are new around here, please do drop a subscribe. I've not been running this channel very long and I'm already up to 2,000 subscribers. It's great to see the growth what I've got and I appreciate every like, comment, subscribe. So if you want to help me out for making this content for you, then that's the way to do it. So let us get straight into it. <laughs> So then, first of all, there are up to 14 to 17 types of different camera, depending on the source that you read, on British roads right now. I'm not going to cover all those different types of cameras. A lot of them work the same way. I'm just going to cover the main ones, what you would see most often day-to-day -day driving. So the first one, and the most popular, is the Gatso Speed Camera. This was the first one to be introduced into Britain. It's the big yellow box that you see at the side of the road. Very boxy, very bulky, always has lines on the road underneath it. These are currently being outphased and being replaced by other cameras that we'll go into later in the video, but there's still a lot of them on the roads. Some key points about these ones is they take two pictures of your vehicle, one when you enter the camera and one further down the line. It will measure the distance between the two pictures and work out how fast you're going. That is what the lines are for. These cameras are rearward facing only. They don't have infrared lights, so they can't flash you in the face. So they can only get you as you're driving away from them. The lines on the other side of the road are there for someone to manually check it using a ruler and line the ruler up. That's why they're being out phased, they're out of date, they're old. These will not get you going into the camera. Like I say, they don't have infrared light. And if they were to flash you going into the camera, it would be dazzling to the driver and potentially dangerous. The exact opposite effect of what you want a speed camera to do. We have hundreds of these cameras in the UK, but we only have a certain amount of innards for the camera. So you'll see the box and there'll be nothing inside it or it might have something inside it. You can usually see this by looking in the top right of the camera, you will see the lamp of the flash but the amount of innards we have per cameras is not much. When I did my speed awareness course some time ago now, I'm sure Staffordshire were claiming to have 350 cameras themselves, but only 100 innards to go inside the cameras, or roughly there or thereabouts. So that just shows you the ratio of cameras to camera innards. If you're lucky, you'll see these getting moved around and you'll see them open up the front, remove the full camera and transfer it onto the next place. The images for these cameras are stored in the cameras, which is why you will see vandals burning them down after they've been caught. Of course, I do not condone or recommend this, but that is why some people would like to vandalise these cameras. Next camera, the Travalo Combi. This camera is a forward-facing camera. It's the upgrade from the Gatso. It uses infrared light. It's smaller. It's more modern looking, but should still be painted yellow. To my knowledge, these do not need lines painted on the road. However, they do use lines as a secondary method of measuring. So if you're driving through one of these and you don't see lines on the road, that doesn't necessarily mean that the camera is inactive. They can still take the measurement without the lines on the road. These can also capture images of the driver. However, if you're a motorcycle rider, obviously you don't have a plate on the front, so that could be a benefit to you if you were to accidentally slip up and speed through one of these cameras. Moving on to another one by Travalo is the D-Cam. This one is a forward-facing and rearward-facing camera. Although they both don't do it at the same time, they can be pointed in either direction. Again, they don't require markings, and these are the only cameras, to my knowledge, that are speed and traffic cameras. So these will often be put at traffic lights to see you passing that red line or breaking that traffic law, as well as seeing you speed through the camera. The next type of camera is the HADEX. What this stands for is Highway Agency Digital Enforcement Camera System. These ones are the new ones that you will have seen on the motorways. They sit at the side of the gantries. They are put there for ease of maintenance. However, they can cover up to five lanes with one camera. You'll usually see them in pairs, and one of them is an infrared emitting light and the other one is the camera itself. These can be fitted in coalition with the speed markings on the overhead gantries, the variable speed markings. However, they don't need to be on for that camera to be used. Some of the older cameras that go behind the overhead speed markings will only be active when the speed marking is active. So if that is turned off, the camera is then turned off. However, these newer ones, 
can be active and will be active all the time and you can get prosecuted regardless whether there's an overhead speed limit. If you're breaking the speed limit of the national speed limit of the motorway, you may be prosecuted and fined. The next one, the sneakiest of them all, the mobile speed camera. The one that jumps out on you, the one that you're not sure is there. Now, of course, these are manned speed cameras or womaned speed cameras. They should be signed and visible. You should have signs coming up to the speed camera itself and they should be in a visible place. If they're parked away hidden, they are doing their job wrong. These cameras have a range of one mile, which is why you'll often see them set up at the top of a hill with nice long clearance so they can shoot the camera down the hill. However, these cameras are, of course, forward facing. So if you were a motorcyclist and you did get caught at the beginning of this one mile and your destination was on the next turning, I would recommend going to your destination because once you pass that camera, he can then turn around and see your registration plate. The next camera is probably my favorite camera of all. And I say this because I feel it's the only camera that's really efficient at restricting speed for the purpose of safety and not generating money. The stats indicate that the Spex camera, which is the average speed camera as you know it, the ones that are put on motorways when we're getting roadworks are the most efficient at slowing you down. Generally, these cameras are forward facing and they're set out along the motorway at certain intervals and they will measure your speed between those intervals. You have to go the legal speed limit going through these cameras. You can't just slow down for the cameras themselves. That's not how they work. For the full duration of those speed limit signs, you have to stick to that speed limit. That is why these are the most efficient cameras. They actually slow people down. That is why they put them in roadworks because the interest is to keep the workers safe, which makes perfect sense. And with the studies that show how effective these cameras are, that kind of amplifies the fact that the other cameras aren't really that effective at saving lives and slowing people down. They're more generating money because there's nothing to stop us putting average speed checks outside schools or other places that are prone to accidents but instead we put the money generating ones that create revenue but that is a conversation for another topic and i'm sure what i've just said there is going to get a few dislikes so don't get too upset so they're the main cameras what i thought i'd cover on this video there are obviously many other cameras a lot of them work the same so it's not really worth going in and wasting your time chatting about them but what we'll go into now is a top myths about cameras because there is some pretty crazy ones out there so let's get into the top myths about cameras first myth you will only get caught speeding if you're going a certain amount over the speed limit plus a certain percentage, blah, blah, blah. Guidance has been set by the relevant agency at 10% plus two miles per hour. That is the point on which they will try to prosecute you for speeding. That being said, it is only guidance. It's not law. By the law, you can get caught for speeding one mile per hour above the speed limit. So to those people that just bolt through cameras at 10% plus the two all the time, you're dicing with death a little bit there. If that camera is calibrated slightly differently, that is why they account for that 10% just in case. Now, a couple about the average speed cameras. Changing lanes confuses the cameras. I mean, <laughs> maybe when these cameras first came out, that might have worked, but let's be real. We've got technology that can track lane changes now. If you think that you can change lanes and avoid the speed cameras, then, then good for you. Let me know how you get on with that. However, tucking in behind cars or tucking in behind trucks, to avoid getting detected by that camera would work because the camera is working on average speed checks. So if you don't get caught by that camera or get picked up in that camera's frame, then that is how some people might get away with speeding through these types of speed cameras, which is wrong. Slowing down and speeding up for these cameras. I know we just touched on it, but let's just reiterate this. The average speed camera works out your average speed over a certain distance. The camera itself is not the bit what catches you. That's just catching your registration plate. So slowing down for it and speeding up, it's just not how they work. You need to be going at constant speed throughout the full speed check. This final one is something I learned doing the video as well. Cameras must be painted yellow and must be easily identified. I thought this was a law and I'm sure it was once upon a time a law, but now it is not a law that cameras must be painted yellow, which is why you will see some of the overhead gantry cameras painted just grey or just not painted at all. I'm pretty sure there is some, some grey area in whether they should be painted or whether they shouldn't because I don't know why they would paint some and not the others. However, right now it looks like they do not have to be painted yellow and you will not have a case if you decide to take it to court and say, well, it wasn't painted. The thing you've got to remember about these speed cameras, in the eyes of the law, they are there to save lives and prevent accidents. They're not there to be dodged and avoided. So if your argument is that you didn't have chance to dodge it, that's not a valid argument. I hope this video has been helpful for you. I know for sure I enjoyed making it and researching the different types of cameras and how they work. Most importantly, drive and ride safely. And if you did like this video, let me know what you liked about it. And if you have anything to add, then please drop it in the comments below and I'll be sure to pin it in my next video.